Hey everyone, welcome into the stream. Today we are going to be finding some profitable products to sell on Amazon. Back again on a Monday, hopefully you all are doing well. If you're watching this as a recording, feel free to just skip ahead a little bit. And if you are watching this live, hop in the chat, let me know where you're watching from. I'll um, give it a couple of minutes for everyone to get in here, check out some of your messages, and then we'll uh, start the research. If you're tuning in, let me know where you're watching from and um, feel free throughout the stream if you have any questions, let me know. I went fishing this morning, that was fun. From Canada, Vancouver, right on. I would love to come up to to BC and do some, some fly fishing for steelhead, uh, London, UK. Awesome. Couldn't it be further from each other? <laughs> I Technically, I don't think that's true, but very far nonetheless. Wisconsin. Nevin's always in the streams. So what's up, Nevin? Thank you guys for hopping in the chat. Nice to see you all. I look like I'm sitting really low right now. I'm in the USA. Yeah, I am. Uh, Bakersfield. Never been there. I've actually never been to anywhere anyone has said so far. I've only been to uh, up and down the West Coast. Well, technically I've been to California, just not Bakersfield. Up and down the West Coast and uh, East Coast. Nowhere in the middle of the country, definitely not Wisconsin. And I've been to, where in Canada did I go? Uh, Victoria. Alberta, Canada, right on. A couple of people from Canada in here now. Good to chat with all you guys. So if you're here, um, I'm going to try and do this every Monday. I've, I've been on a really good streak, like three times in a row so far. I've been making it here. Um, if you see my gaze veer off to the left, that's where the chat is. So just know I'm reading whatever you guys are putting down right there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can keep this as a habit. I've been going live every week. It's been really fun for me, just trying to do what's fun. YouTube has been really weird for not only me, but I feel like everyone lately, where they don't really push content that's longer form. So, you know, they want people to do shorts a lot. And this is basically just me doing what I want to do, because I think that's what's important about this. Just keeping it fun. That's why I started it in the, in the first place. So yeah, we're gonna get going here in a few seconds, by the way. Uh, got some people in the stream already. We are just gonna be uh, giving it maybe like 60 seconds, then we'll start up some product research. You guys can watch what I'm doing live. And uh, if you have any questions or point out any tools that you want me to try, etc. It's gonna be pretty open form today. I'm just gonna be having some fun looking for some products to sell. It is gonna be 2023 soon. I do think Amazon is still an awesome place to sell. That hasn't changed for me. Uh, my new brand is launching incredibly soon and uh, I'm really excited for that and I will be launching it on Amazon. So here we are. Let's, um, can you do a, a giveaway, free call with you, please and thanks. That's a really good, uh, really good idea. If you stick around till the end of the, uh, really important thing that made me, uh, think of something I wanted to bring up. I am doing a Cyber Monday sale. So if you want to do a call with me and talk about selling on Amazon, finding products, managing your brand, etc., get my perspective on things. I actually do have discounts right now. So you can go in the description of this stream and there will be a link for Patreon. So cool. Let's get this thing. Uh, let's get this thing kicked off. We're going to switch into my screen here and At least that's the plan. Here we go. Perfect. Now we're going to start doing some product research. So I've been having a lot of fun with this um, product opportunity explorer. It is free. 
it is awesome. And here's the coolest thing about this tool, right? You all have access to it. You don't have to pay for it. Well, technically you're paying for a Seller Central account, but that's about it. I think you can do it with a free Seller Central account. And it's Amazon basically telling you what to sell. How cool is that, right? They wouldn't recommend products that they don't have any incentive to push people to the idea of selling that product. Pretty awesome. So I'm gonna let you guys pick a category. Feel free uh, to vote in the live chat. See, this is my favorite part about going live. Less work for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of. Also in the live chat, how many of you guys like seltzer? I feel like seltzer can kind of be polarizing. We got home and kitchen. We got office products. Nice. Kali said, yo, what's up? So yeah, do you guys like seltzer or do you think it's uh, horrible? I really like it. I'm a seltzer maniac. I buy like 24 cans a week. My whole fridge is lined with seltzer. Whole top shelf. Zoltan, what's going on? With a name like Zoltan, hmm, how would you say that last name? Cherry? Cher? Uh, where were you from? I'm going to guess you're from Western Europe. Eastern Europe? Somewhere around there. I'm probably so wrong. I'm starting to gravitate towards hard seltzers as opposed to beer. Oh, hungry. Mid Europe. Okay, um, gravitating towards seltzers as opposed to beer. I really like, um, really good mic quality. Awesome. Glad it's coming through good. I really like beer as well, <laughs> but this is like, uh, it's one o'clock where I am right now. So this is going to have to do pets. Okay. So votes for the category we've got pets, home and kitchen and office products. We did pets last time. Let's do office products, because I feel like that's kind of entrepreneurial. A lot of us can probably relate to that. Office and school, office furniture, office electronics. Probably stay away from electronics. Let's do this so you guys can see a little bit better. How would we even, there we go. Let's do office and school supplies. Private label seller myself. Love your channel. Keep it up. Thanks, Dalton. That's really kind of you. I gotta like get in the zone here. I'm just like looking at the words, but they're not meaning anything to me right now. This is like uh, the behind the scenes live footage of what it's actually like to do product research. Just like staring at a screen and like daydreaming for periods of time and then remembering what you have to do. Cutting and measuring is kind of pulling, pulling at my attention. Education and crafts. I actually really like the crafts idea. I feel like you could build a brand in that and uh, it's very, very marketable. You can make kits for specific kinds of people and specific kinds of interests. Arts and crafts supplies. Let's just go right there arts and crafts supplies. We'll just do C category. So one thing that I do want to note, right? So if we just go back really quick, notice how at any point in here, I can go C category. So we could even just go office products and then C category. So what you're doing there is you're pulling bigger and bigger lists. If you go in further and further, then you're getting smaller and smaller results but more niche specific. So for instance, when we come in here and then we go into, what did we go into? I already forgot. It wasn't cutting and measuring. We did something else. It's like arts and crafts or something. Yeah, I, I totally lost it. If you're in the chat, remind me, what were we in? Office storage supplies? It wasn't that. Someone's gonna tell me. I forgot education and craft perfect yeah that's right crafts okay so you can hit C, uh, C category 
at any point. So if I were to go all the way into, um, all the way into, let's see, what's not so specific? Here we go. Early childhood education materials in C category. I actually can't go any more niche than that. So now we get a list of ideas that's only going to have to do with early childhood education. So <laughs> this is what I love about this tool, right? Amazon's telling you to sell this thing. They're giving you the search terms that they already want you to rank for. They're giving you the quality of sales potential. This is literally a nine out of 10. Now I'm famous for saying <laughs> famous, like 60 people might know this about me. Um, I hate the score, like algorithmically determined scores, right? People are like, yeah, this idea says they say it's an eight. Like, should I sell it? I'm like, forget about the scores, learn how to like look at the fundamentals of markets and come to conclusions about what you should be looking for in that market to determine if it's a good idea. Not just saying, oh, it's an eight or a nine. That doesn't really mean anything. But in this case, because it's Amazon, um, they're literally giving you an exact score of comparatively, if you were to list all of these products, that nine in this 10 are most likely to capture sales in a direct comparison to these products in this niche. So something like library card pockets is at a one out of 10 you're actually unlikely as a new listing to start capturing sales there. So I think that is something cool to look at. And it is funny, right? The things that are more niche, something like a library card pocket, which is a very generic product, which doesn't have much difference within it versus like a routine chart where there's probably a massive amount of difference um, in each individual design and what routine it's for, et cetera. That's giving it a 10 out of 10. So with my philosophy, it's lining up. So at this point, let's go ahead and let's do routine chart for kids. We'll click on it. That'll bring us to this page. I'm starting to get more of an understanding of this, by the way. Um, I, the last stream we did, this was all kind of new to me. Now I've used it more this week and I could actually teach you guys some stuff about it. Um, so check this out. So this was the 10 out of 10 idea. The search volume is 52,000. Now that's for a whole year. So divide that by 365 and there's your daily search volume, divide it by 12, there's your monthly search volume. Um, so like 6,000, right, divided by 12. And is that right? No, that's not even close to right. It's like 4,000. And anyway, when we come in here, we have a list of competing products within this space and they're ranked in order of click count. So the, the most clicked listings, which probably means um, the most sales in, um, in the grand scheme of things. We'll determine that when we go and look at the actual market with a tool like Jungle Scout or Helium 10. But yeah, this is really cool information. It's all exactly from Amazon, right? There, there is no debate of whether this is up to date, whether it's right, whether, you know, and this is from Amazon. It's not Helium 10's interpretation. It's not Jungle Scout's interpretation. Again, this tool's free, it's awesome. The one thing that I do wanna point out to you guys is these specific, like I would really focus on these right here. Right, this is the, um, how would you put this? Kind of like the different options that you have to look at as terms of data relating to these products. Search terms is one of my favorites. Uh, customer review insights is my favorite. So we'll go through all of those. But here you get a list of, let's see, I wanna actually count because I've never done this and I wanna know. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So 15 keywords, 15 keywords based on their search volume. Again, Amazon's gonna always sort them from uh, greatest to least and most relevant too. So again, one of my biggest pet peeves with a tool like Magnet by Helium 10 or Keyword Scout by Jungle Scout is they give you freaking 10,000 keywords, right? And half of them have nothing to do with the product that you wanna sell. These are all from Amazon. They're all saying, hey, these have directly contributed to sales. We have PPC data supporting this. We have the sales data supporting this. If you're gonna sell this product, sell it under these keywords and these phrases. So look at the potential for building a PPC campaign with this, right? Excuse me. Hey, cheers, I'm drinking a seltzer. That's gonna happen once in a while. Um, the, but the potential for building a campaign right here is amazing, right? So you put every one of these in maybe their own campaign as an exact match with a bid, figure out if you're gonna rank for it, now you know. So that's the search terms one, um, going to insights. This one I haven't spent a ton of time on, 
but it would be something, again, it's just a little bit more of a boring screen. Didn't catch my eye, but there is some interesting stuff in here. So products that are top 80% of clicks, number of products. Um, today there's 65 uh, products, 90 days ago, 54, 360 days ago, 300, uh, live chat. My phone keeps uh, being weird for some reason. I'm using that as like the chat. Yeah, there we go. Um, are you gonna upload this later on? Definitely. It always gets uploaded. So I know, let me show you guys specifically on YouTube because it's really weird how you have to access it. And I feel like uh, a lot of people miss out on it. So check this out. So you have these options up top on YouTube. Same thing on mobile. If you go to the YouTube app, if you're watching it, um, go to my page and you have these options. It's never gonna show up here under videos, like where you're used to seeing my videos. It just doesn't, I don't know why. You have to go to the live section and then you get all my previous live streams. So you can see a month ago, 13 days ago, five days ago, those are all the ones we've been doing. So this one today, when it's done, it'll be right there. Okay, back to this. Um, customer review insights is the next best one. Well, sorry, no, it's actually my favorite one, not the next best one. This is really cool because it's giving you a qualitative review of what to change about the product. I mean, this this tool is like the best thing I've seen in uh, Amazon software in a long time, right? It's Amazon telling you what to sell and then it's the exact things that they want you to change about it, ranked based on what their customers are saying and they've already collected all that information for you. So instead of just going, here's all the reviews, there's a thousand, go through them, figure it out. They're saying, hey, the negative review snippets, the topic is like magnet, magnetic strength, durability, right? So it changes based on what the product is. You wouldn't see magnetic strength if you're selling like a tug of war rope or something, right? Um, so it is changing uh, what you should focus on. But keep in mind, they have like a list of categories that they're picking from for the topic. So don't just go, oh, these are the negative things, right? Look at what the actual review snippets say, and then look at what specific aspect of the product that's telling you that you should change. So for instance, in this case, the magnets, um, magnets list does not stick to the actual checkoff board. So we'll have to look at the product more and figure out what they mean by that. But yeah, check this out. This is really cool. Let's go to Amazon and actually look up the product. How's the stream going for everyone so far? Got any questions? Feel free to pop it in the chat. A whopping 12 people watching this. It's funny, I used to do live streams when I had like a quarter of the amount of subscribers I had now, and there'd be a hundred people. So yeah, like I was saying, YouTube's doing some really weird stuff. Um, just like not pushing content, like that search term based and like, um, they really want like real style, like compete with Instagram type, like short mindless content, which is not what my channel's ever gonna be about, so. All right, cool. So this is the actual like routine chart page, right? When you search it, what you're gonna see as a customer. Now, like I said, there's there's a, there's a massive amount of difference between these products. And again, this isn't actually called a chore chart, it's called a routine chart, right? So this might be, like this one looks like it's, that's the one we were looking at, most relevant. So that one does 3,000 per month. This one does actually 9,000 per month half the price and this one does 8,000 per month 6,000 per month 3,000 per month so one thing that I talk about in my mastermind that I do every Thursday um, that one of my I guess you would say friends in the mastermind has brought up quite a few times is the fact that when you're selling a product that relates to a specific task make that task visualized through the image, right? Like you're selling a routine chart for kids, have a kid in the main image, right? I know people are like, oh, it has to be a white background. Well, guess what? Like all of this is fair game. As long as you have a technically a white border around it, you could have a kid's arm going on to check out the task, right? And you could have like toys getting organized. Like you can integrate some of that in. That makes a massive difference on your hero image gets you more clicks, which might, if they like the rest of the um, value of the product, once they get into the listing, will get you the most sales. 
So that's something that's huge, is making it, again, talk about what YouTube's doing with its traffic and where it's putting it. It's like attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So when we go into a market like this, how can we take advantage of the fact that, yeah, I need to be able to, in a split second, make a customer decide, I wanna buy that one, without them even knowing what we had done, right? It's like you have to play on, oh, it's almost like a picture's worth a thousand words. So you have to put, you know, you might have to put a, um, it's hard to say, it's like an action-based thing in a still image. That usually, well, we call that lifestyle. That gets people to buy. So there's some things we can go into there. This is just one idea. Um, that's something that I would do if I were to sell this product is I would go and I would read all of those reviews that we found in the uh, customer review insights. I would figure out what really is the issue here and then what's the buying point? Like people usually say nice things about the thing that um, they liked the most too. So can we, a lot of the times people change their product too much. Like there's probably things that are good about this product and we don't wanna get rid of those, but then how do we add so much on top of that that it is the clear choice? Um, Cameron James said, Paul Savage is the man. Hey, thanks man, I recognize you. Uh, appreciate you being here in the chat, that's awesome. Um, Zoltan said, how do you find prices with your new US supplier compared to a Chinese seller of the same or of a very similar product? I have no experience in, uh, in the US supplier prices, also factor in Chinese shipping to yes, excuse me for unrelated question. No, that's a really good question. Um, no questions are off game here. So I actually found the best price from a US manufacturer and it's funny how that works because of the like niche that you're in, it might be so different, right? So my product's actually pretty heavy. So the shipping cost to get it from China to here, first of all, it was so customized that I couldn't even, like it would have been just as hard to make it there as here. So I was like, oh, that's a no brainer. I'll just make it here since it's already from scratch build anyway. But then the shipping price would have been so much higher because my product's eight pounds per unit. Um, it's not very large, but it's very heavy comparatively. So my fees um, are already kind of high, right? We're even looking to three PLs. So to ship from China, it makes no sense. So I don't really have good advice for you there. I would just say, look everywhere, look where you most want to find the thing first, right? If best case scenario, I can get it from here. Where is that place? It might be the US, it might be Canada, it might be India. It depends on what the, the nature of the product is start there and work back to like worst case scenario, where do I not want it? It's like, I don't want long shipping times. Um, I don't want it from a Chinese supplier that's gonna uh, put list my product and sell it to other people that are gonna become my direct competition, etc. So for me, it just happened to all line up. I put a ton of work into finding a US manufacturer, like it took a long time, but anyway, that's, uh, that's about that. Let's go back, I wanna start from scratch again. We did one run through and we did come to a product makes about $9,000 per month, potentially. And then like your ability to then go in there, understand who the customer is that's buying that product is gonna be really your reward at the end of the tunnel, right? It's like, it's it's so easy to get caught up in the product, but what is the product? It's It's just something that's valuable to a person that's on the other end of Amazon clicking purchase. So figure out how do we make it more valuable to them in direct comparison to what currently exists. Be the clear best choice and then that's gonna be pretty much a no brainer for your customer. It's not easy, right? Sometimes it's hard. It's really easy to just go sell what everyone already sells. It's already made, right? But that's what I would like to think what the fun of this whole game is, is that it is challenging. So we'll go back to all. We're doing another vote. We got 15 people in here now. Please uh, please feel free to choose a category. We'll go through it, try and find some private label products. I would like to think brandable products, right? Not even just private label. Ginger seltzer today. This week I got ginger and cherry. Home decor. That left a bad taste in my mouth. Not the seltzer, home decor. Used to sell home decor. 
It's really hard to identify who the customer is, right? We're actually, it's very relatable. We were just talking about that. Who's the customer? The home decor, it's like, I don't really know. Um, I have no idea who's buying this. It's not like a specific person with a specific interest. It's enthusiastic about that thing and will come back to you. It's like you might have just crossed paths with someone uh, randomly that saw this thing on Pinterest and now is looking for it. They have no interest in ever buying anything from you again. They don't care about you, the seller, or who they're buying it from. They just want a decent priced product that looks pretty good. So that's pretty tough. Video games? I mean, I technically have sold several video game related products. So uh, with something as heavy as 35 pounds in the margin of volume standard, so maybe one of the downsides would be storage and fees from a 3PL or a warehouse. There's technically, if there's good margins, then it's fine, right? It's all relative. You have a 35 pound product that fits in a box that big. Um, I don't know what this was. It's my reenactment of a box, I guess. Fits in a box that big, you sell it for 229 bucks or something and you only buy it for 38 bucks. That's fine. It's all good. Uh, downsides, I just think storage, volume, shipping, those are the things that might get you. Uh, could please search in the UK market? Uh, no. It's like a lot smaller, way less interesting. Um, Zoltan, also refund fees. Wait, am I missing something? Oh, refund fees for the... The heavy thing, right? Women's handbags? Uh, so competitive, really hard to build a brand in a space like that. Anyway, home and kitchen? I mean, we were just... Home and kitchen is... Looks like it's winning. Uh, sensory toys or tents? So those are pretty specific. Uh, sensory toys, again, so just like very driven by cheap Chinese products. And again, the customer's kind of just buying the kit that is the cheapest that looks pretty good. We really wanna hone in on like, what is a specific customer that we can reach and continue to reach so that we can sell them a suite of products, not just one. You usually don't find that by going product first, you usually find that by going interest and enthusiast first, and then working back to what do they already buy and making better versions of those products. Not sure if you spotted my message as I crashed here, but you got on the, but got you on the TV here in the UK. Thanks for all your uploads. Oh, hey Adam. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. That's um, it's awesome. Watching on the TV. Hey, I made it. It's Hollywood. Um, Hollywood has a, oh Hollywood. I'm confusing myself. Home and kitchen has a lot of uh, niches. I think. Yeah, it does. It's the biggest category by far. So we could go, you know, home and kitchen, and then. Uh, yeah, like it, that's almost like you guys need to choose again. How about we just keep doing that? Vote for what you want out of this list now. I'll tell you right now, the first thing I get that has two votes, we're going with. So you better vote quick. Hi from India? What's going on? All the way from India. Must be late. It's got to be the middle of the night. It's got to be. I'm guessing it's 1 a.m. there. Furniture. Furniture is kind of cool. Again, who is that person? How are to be enthusiastic about furniture? I really want to like drill that idea into everyone who crosses my path and talks to me about e-commerce. It's just like, who are you selling it to? Who is that person? Um, Furniture, do you just hear from certain people? It's like, oh yeah, I started a furniture business and it went pretty good. Or like, I sell big stuff and that works. It's never that, that. Right? It's always on the other side of the spectrum. Kitchen and dining. I mean, this might take longer than I think. I might have to just take, uh, take control here. Event and party supplies. I don't like products that people use once and then throw away. That's a really hard way to win a customer. Kitchen and dining. Um, is that technically two? That's two. All right, we're going kitchen and dining. I like it. 
This is a great example of somewhere that there's an enthusiast customer. You know, people buy $5,000 espresso machines. Like that's the epitome of someone, like, do you think the coffee's that much better? It's like, no, it's the experience. It's like they love making coffee, getting new kinds of coffee, grinding coffee themselves, figuring out a new roaster, all that stuff. Let's do coffee and tea. That's really a, a good idea. So simplified products are awesome. I don't want moving parts. I don't want an engine. I don't want a motor. I don't want uh, any electricity running through the thing. Like if we can just get down to, why don't we go coffee and tea and then C category? Okay, so there's nothing there. Let me go back one step and we'll go in from, wow, we really lost that one. So we went home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, coffee, tea, and espresso. And we'll just see category right from there. Is this live today? This is live right now. Yes. So check this out. You've got makers, grinders, mixers, tea infuser. Now we're getting into something. Tea bag and uh, organizer. That's a product that you could sell. And you could make it driven by the needs of a specific person. It's like, I see bags there, but what about loose leaf? What about like a spot to hang your infuser or bundle an infuser with it? Ah, that's the best one I've seen so far. Mocha pot. I've used a mocha pot before. I don't know if that's like rare. Um, like I'm not trying to brag. <laughs> it's just like, it's an interesting way to make coffee. I'm sure a lot of you guys have used one. Okay, so tea bag organizer. Let's check that out. I like that idea. So get a general look at what the, you know, the products are, what the layout of them is. Oh, those are really bad images. They're rendered down pretty, pretty poorly, huh? So some acrylic and there's some bamboo. That's about all I've seen. There's a couple metal ones. That one reads very Zen, very Eastern. That's pretty cool. All right, go to our old faithful customer review insights. See what the, the issue is. So it doesn't work, not very practical. Let's see, too small, inferior quality. What a hilarious way to put that uh, in a review. Inferior quality, poorly made, didn't like how big it is. So it's too small, it's too big. Problem with this is it's not reviewing one product, right? So you wanna look at overall, like if I was to make a better product in this market, what should I focus on? I didn't even notice this when I clicked on it, but this is a 10 out of 10 on the sales potential again. Search volume is a million 300,000. That's amazing. This is really big. So tea bag organizer, let's go check that out. We're on Amazon, we're rolling, we're live. Oh, how was uh, all of my American friends Thanksgiving? And uh, everyone else, how was your weekend? Well, Thanksgiving was technically not on the weekend, but close enough. This is the uh, newest video I've made since then, so it's still fresh on the mind. I went out to eat. I got reservations. First time I've ever done this. Thanksgiving Day. Reservations, me, my girlfriend, and my sister. It's very simple. It's very good. Dressed up a little bit, went out, had a few drinks, got some good food, it was awesome. How about you guys? I think the chat is still good. Sometimes, oh, almost lost the whole thing there. I noticed last time for some reason I had like top chat on, so I wasn't seeing like 90% of the chat questions. And this time I've got it on all, so I think we're good. Yeah. Oh no, it's back on top chat. See, that's funny. I literally had it on the thing I said I didn't have it on. So anyway, let's look at this. $35,000 per month. What? That's crazy for a little acrylic box that holds tea bags. 25,000 a month, 31,000 a month, $60,000 per month. These are crazy. They're just freaking boxes with little drawers. How are these ones doing? Cause this is the one that kind of caught my eye, like the actual 
It's funny. This would actually be really helpful for me because we have just like a tea drawer. The bags are kind of like still in the boxes they come in, just like sitting kind of like this. But you get down to like last couple packets of your favorite tea, things start to get a little crazy in that drawer. Ripping up all the ones that you don't like just to get to the other ones. Anyway, tea problems, right? So what are your guys' ideas for, you know, what we could potentially do to stand out in a market like this? I know I have some. I would say, um, I would say a unique design that also has a new utility, right? Because design's one thing, but design can be easily copied. I prefer coffee. Hey man, I do too, but um, this is the product, I guess. <laughs> I uh, I think. I think there could be a new utility here, right? Because the whole point of this is that it's like, it's saving space, it's organizing. It's, it's actually doing something for you. It's making it easier to see the teas you have, making it easier to pick them, keeping it cleaner. Is there any way that we can also organize some of the things you need to make tea, which is like, you know, a shelf on this part and it's wall mounted and you put your teacups here right teacups go above it on a shelf and then you have like a little hook for like your tea oh loose leaf right we didn't even talk about that i said that a while ago but i just remembered there's nowhere to keep loose leaf on this thing so some kind of storage for loose leaf would be amazing if there was like some airtight compartments for that that'd be cool so what do you think the purchasing price is for these wholesale like five pence absolutely not it's way more than that these are like pretty big wooden things Granted, I don't really, I would say in the US, this is probably one of these, probably cost you like uh, four to seven dollars. And uh, then there's shipping. So yeah, it can get expensive quickly. That's one of the things that I do like about this product is there's a range of price that is successful from 15 all the way up to 35. This one sells $22,000 per month. 29 people in the chat. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's like the most I've seen since I started doing these live streams this year. How are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day. I had an amazing morning myself, went fishing, uh, had some good coffee. I hit them all this weekend. I got some new Nespresso pods. So I've been using uh, the hazelnut muffin Nespresso pod. That thing's pretty good. So what's the MOQ US supplier offer generally? Yeah, you know, my product's not super expensive. It's highly custom, but strangely pretty cheap um, because it doesn't really sell for that much. We're gonna be selling at like $29.99. So my product is only a few dollars to manufacture here in the US, believe it or not. And uh, we're gonna just be ordering 800. My, the harder thing was actually package design in the US. They want you to order like 5,000 bags or boxes, depending on how you're packaging your product. So we ended up getting 2,500 package design, like packaging, units of packaging made. Do you do OA or RA? I do not. Online arbitrage or retail arbitrage? I don't. No, I used to. Um, I guess this is probably like a really good time of year to do that though, right? With all the Black Friday seal, uh, sales and discounts and stuff. So by the way, um, this tool will give you the idea. If you want to figure out how to make it better, you really need to understand that what you're actually trying to increase is value. And the we thought uh, are taught in private label like so many videos that are just like oh make it a bundle like this person just has two of them um and you know so you see that and you're like oh i'm just gonna do this design but i'm gonna have two of them it's so like old school it really doesn't work well you're probably not going to have a profitable business if you think that way 
the way to really win here and to have like a proprietary thing that you sell, people know you for, and come to you to buy other additional things is the way that we were thinking when we were thinking, how do we customize this? And we're going, what does the customer need? What do they want? What are issues that they have that no one's thought of? It's like a loose leaf, um, you know, organization for other T related things, and then making um, a beautiful product as well as a product that works great. And then how do we sell it? Well on Amazon, but that's just one little avenue, right? If you open your mind up to like, are there people who have tea related channels and tea companies that you can collaborate with to sell this thing? Now you're thinking like an entrepreneur, right? Just beyond like this small little realm of private label. Uh, I, my ambitions are so much bigger than just private labeling products. It's like, I want to own a brand that works with um, really high quality influencers to sell an amazing product to a group of people who are super passionate about the kind of thing that we're selling so that we can all be in this profitable business relationship and profit profitable business customer relationship. Um, so yeah, this was a really good live stream this week. How long have we been live? Let me just make sure we're things not going on ridiculous amount of time. 40 minutes. Um, We'll just do a Q&A here at the end. Other than that, I think it was a pretty good place to, to leave off. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, Q&A, uh, 22 people here. If you guys got any questions, feel free to feel free to shoot them into the chat. And uh, hopefully I can help you out. There is uh, something that I mentioned at the beginning. I don't know how many of you are still here from that long, or if this is like mostly new people that tuned in halfway through. Cyber Monday deal, one-on-one uh, -on -one calls to me are the cheapest they'll ever be. They're uh, down in the description below. So if you wanna do um, do some private one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls to me, I'd be happy to do so. So thanks for replying. One more question. So far, Amazon private label, what kind of products Amazon seller can source? Wood product, paper? Yeah, pretty much anything. You can kind of use common sense there. It's just like, is this restricted? And there's literally a list of product or a list of yeah, a list of products that you can that you can say, um, like Amazon restricted. I don't know why I'm like brain farting this. It's called the Amazon restricted products list. You can just look at it and it'll tell you everything you can and cannot sell. So from the USA, um, yeah, you can you can source like bulkier stuff here does well commodity style stuff like lumber, wood. It's all really easy to source in the US. I'll take three more questions. Then we're gonna go. Oh, I said I was gonna give someone a free 15 minute call. I'm gonna think of a number between uh, one and 10 and the first person to guess it gets the free call. Go. <laughs> no spamming. If you spam, you're out. Jero, he got it. First guy to say a number. It was seven. Uh, so put your email. Oh, how are we going to do this? It's always hard to, uh, to get the actual call set up because if you put your email in the chat it won't come through it'll go through a spam um, here's what we're gonna do um, I will have I will have you comment oh do it this way so write it out like don't write it out as an email address write it out like with the at as a word so like an example would be like Paul space savage space at the word at um, Gmail, uh, and then dot spelled out dot. So you have to kind of like code it that way, as it's as if it's a sentence. Um, so before we go, put your uh, put your email in the chat with that format, and then I will email you a link for the fifteen minute call. Helium X Ray. What uh, what was the software you used to give the sales rates? Oh, that was Jungle Scout. Yeah, the one on the actual like page i think that's what you're referring to in the beginning we were using opportunity explorer which is just free software but yeah congrats man that's really cool he got it first try
By the way, if you're here right now, we're going to do same time next Monday. Yeah. Uh, so let me give you an example, by the way. It's like this. I was trying to explain it. I don't know if I did a good job. Like write it out like that. It's so weird, like in the YouTube comment section for some reason, if, well, not for a good reason actually, if you put your email address, it's not gonna show up. I had this problem last time I gave a call away. But yeah, for all of you who did not win the free call, like I said, Cyber Monday deals for one-on-ones right now. I don't run a course anymore, um, just, just doing one-on-one -on -one work. I really like working with entrepreneurs. I learned that about myself pretty easily. Like um, the like mainstream thinking in entrepreneur community is kind of like help more people uh, with a product that you don't doesn't require your time. But that kind of ruins the fun for me. I like the hands-on stuff and like seeing the people that I'm helping build their business. Yeah, next week, same time, live stream. We're gonna be live. I will see you there, Adam. It's getting cold here in the Northwest. If we do end up ending the stream, before I see you put it in the chat. Jero, you still put the uh, email in the chat in that format? Just comment on this live stream video when it's uh, an actual video. Because I think we're going to end it here. A lot of people falling off. Like 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm doing some pretty cool stuff this week. We are packaging our product finally there's like some will ever be in my shipping times the quickest it will ever be because it's here in the u.s but it's just like the all of the steps of running a business pile up so there's still uh so adam said the one that floats over the amazon listing that is jungle scout yeah did i already answer that i don't know i said i would do three more questions so if anyone has a question i'll definitely answer it before i go I feel like the chat on my phone is not super correct for some reason. No, it is. Jero, buddy, I need your, uh, I need your email if you want the free call. And then, um, yeah, we're looking good. So really active chat today. Thanks for everyone that tuned in. I am gonna end it here and we will be back next week. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for coming. Subscribe if you're new. If for some reason you're watching a live stream from a guy you've never seen before. And uh, like the stream so it gets out to more, vid uh, more people. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys, I'll see you next week, later.